So we're ready to summarize the ideas of straight line motion, known as kinematics, the description of motion versus dynamics, the causes of motion, namely Newton's laws. And when we discuss motion, we make simplifying assumptions typically, such as the object is a point particle or can be modeled as a point particle. Now, a case in point would be a situation where we have a ramp and a bowling ball and a car, and they're going to have a race. And as they race down the ramp, we discover that the car actually surpasses the bowling ball and gets to the bottom first. Well, this is a little bit mysterious, but not that mysterious. What we haven't done is considered rotational inertia, which is the effort it takes to spin the ball up as it rolls down the ramp. So this is a situation where the simplifying assumption is not valid, and in AP Physics we look a little more carefully at some of those reality checks that we may have overlooked in previous discussions of motion. Okay, so first of all, a whirlwind discussion of things you already know or should know or hopefully you know. Positions, symbols x or y, displacement, d, which is delta x, which is also final minus initial position. Average velocity, displacement over time, which is delta x over t, x minus x zero over t. And average acceleration, change in velocity over time, v minus v zero over t. It's important to understand basic information from graphs. An x versus t graph, here's just a random sample. And in order to get the position x, what do you do? Well, it's a position time graph, so you just read it. How do you get the velocity? Well, it's the slope of the line at any point. The acceleration, well, if it is a curved line, then the rate at which the slope is now, the rate at which the position is changing is changing. Therefore, the slope is changing. The velocity is changing. That's a curved line. What does the area tell you? Well, the area under the graph is meters times seconds, and so it doesn't mean anything. How about a velocity graph? Here's a random sample again. To get velocity from a velocity graph, you read it. How do you get acceleration? You guessed it, the slope of the line. The change in position as coming from a velocity graph is simply the area under the curve. You think about it, we have meters per second over in this variable times seconds. Meters over seconds times seconds is meters, and that's a, got the dimensions for position. And finally, what is the position? Well, the position is x0 plus delta x. Delta x is the area x0 must be given by some other information. We must be told what it is. And then we have the acceleration graph. Here's an example. So to get acceleration, once again, read the graph. Change in velocity. What information gives you change in velocity? Yes, the area, because the area is meters per second per second or meters per second squared times seconds gives you meters per second. To get the actual velocity at any given point you need the initial velocity which you don't have unless given plus the area or delta v. Then the rate at which area changes or the acceleration changes. Delta a over delta t that's the slope of the line that's also known as jerk. For most considerations most problems we don't have a change in acceleration. If so, it just makes the problem quite a bit more difficult. And now let me give you the basic complement of constant acceleration equations. The acceleration is, well, constant. I guess it kind of goes without saying, right? The average velocity is defined as the initial plus the final divided by two. Again, if it's constant acceleration. The final velocity, or the instantaneous velocity at any given point, is the initial plus acceleration times time. Now this comes from the basic definition of acceleration, delta v over t, or v minus v zero over t. What's the position? It's where it started out, plus the initial velocity times time, that's a displacement term, and then one half at squared. 
you should look familiar to you. Then finally, v squared is equal to v0 squared plus 2a times displacement. Now let me just give you a little overview, brief synopsis about where these equations come from for those interested in a little more background. Okay, let me give you a little background for the all-important position equation. So we start with a velocity graph that's changing uniformly with time. This initial velocity v0 is represents the distance from 0 up to that point v0. And then the rest of the velocity at the end is the acceleration times time. This is undergoing constant acceleration. From the graph, we see that v, the final velocity, is just v0 plus at. So the average velocity, since this is a uniform change from v0 to v, is just the initial velocity plus the final velocity divided by 2. And that gives us the value at the time midpoint, which is right there. Well, rewriting this, we have average velocity is 1 half v0 plus the velocity, and the velocity is v0 plus at, so I put that here. And then that's v0 plus 1 half at, but that's average velocity, which is displacement divided by time. So if we multiply this thing through by t, we get x minus x0 is v0t plus 1 half at squared. Oh, looks familiar, doesn't it? There it is. This is change in position or displacement. This is the area of the graph. Well, more robustly revealed in, its, in both of its major parts here, v0t, whoop, there it is. And 1 half at squared is simply this triangular piece. And together, they give us x is x0 plus v0t plus 1 half at squared. And may you ever be impressed by its beauty and excellence and help in solving problems. And now that other very robust equation we get if there is no time given in the problem. From v is equal to v0 plus at, we can solve for time. v minus v0 over a. Then we have x is x0 plus v0t, but in this case, we're going to sub in that for t. So there it is. Plus 1 half a t squared. There's t squared with our new formulation for t, which we actually don't have. Now this thing is just begging to be multiplied by 2a. So I'm going to go ahead and oblige and multiply it by 2a. Because if we do bring an x0 over on the other side, then this a is going to go away, and so is that one. Watch this. Hmm. There goes the first a, and there goes the second a. a squared, actually. So we have 2 v0 times v minus v0 plus v squared minus 2 v0 v, just expanding this thing, right, and doing the algebra which is equal to 2v0v minus 2v0 squared plus v squared minus 2v0v plus v0 squared. Well, some of this goes away, and this whole thing becomes v squared minus v0 squared. And that's all 2a times x minus x0. So finally, v squared is equal to v0 squared plus 2a delta x. And I'll leave you with one more little tidbit, namely, the average velocity is displacement over time, x minus x0 over t, which is the final plus initial. Just add the two velocities, divide by 2. And that gives you, when we multiply by time, x minus x0, the displacement equals the average velocity times time.